Aloha, my name is Nathan Tanoi, and I will be talking about the promise of algal biofuels. This is a video made for the Nats 101 class with Dr. Waller and Dr. Poe. Algae is found all over the world, from the green scum that fills ponds and oceans to the scourge of fish tank enthusiasts. It fills all kinds of roles, from the indispensable organisms uh, which form the bottom of the food chain to providing most of the oxygen that we breathe. There are many, many different types of algae, but most of the focus uh, on algae for biofuel research has been microalgae, which include mostly single-celled organisms or small colonies. So here are a few examples. Algae is just not the first plants to be examined for um, development of biofuels. In fact, you probably have ethanol uh, mixed with the gasoline in the tank of your car right now. Although ethanol is widespread and has some great benefits and reduces our dependence on foreign oil, it has some concerns attached to it. The corn that is used for ethanol is not going into food production and land that would otherwise be used for food is used for fuel production instead. Algae promises to offer a solution to these troubles without competing for arable land or nutrients, all while presenting several benefits of its own. First, algae grows with little maintenance. We've all seen how annoying it is when algae fills a swimming pool or fills a uh, fish tank. Second, it does not displace land crops because it grows in water. Um, third, it's not usually used for food, so there's no concern about competition between food and fuel. Uh, it can even be grown with wastewater, uh, cleaning up sewage systems and such without uh, using fresh water that would otherwise be used for crops either. Um, algae has up to 30 times more energy uh, per meter than per square meter than any other biofuel crop. It also is adaptable to various climates due to the many different varieties, um, which is what makes it such a promising uh, overall worldwide resource. And it can grow where nothing else can. I actually just saw in our National Geographic article about how there are very, very dense algae blooms um, in Antarctica, all covered by ice and surrounded by glaciers, but it's some of the densest uh, algae growth they've seen anywhere. Several systems have been designed for growing algae commercially. Some are as simple as open ponds, um, but Concerns about available surface area, uncontrolled variables like temperature and light, and competition with other species, along with the potential for contamination, have pushed research towards closed systems. These systems are known as photobioreactors, or PBRs, and come in a variety of shapes and sizes with a myriad of designs. The essential features are a maximum surface area for exposure to light, a method of circulating carbon dioxide and other nutrients, and temperature, and temperature control. The process of converting biomass into usable fuels and chemicals uh, is a lot of chemistry, but basically it begins with separating the biomass into its separate components, extracting the oils and sugars and other immediately useful parts, and then uh, putting the rest through a refining process to turn it into fuels that we can use. While several processes have been proven to work, uh, to make them energy efficient, um, that is to get more energy out of the process than you put into it, uh, is going to take much more research. Um, this is probably going to be similar to the way we saw the development of ethanol, where at first uh, much of the energy was wasted and we ended up losing energy in the production process but after development in technology and uh, refining we now have a energy efficient process for ethanol 
and we can expect to see the same uh, for algae and perhaps one day algae will be the plant that powers the world.